using all these chemicals. So first samples were made and they worked, but not quite. They didn't work 100%. Um, and it was actually the third fiber I used. I'm really talking about a long time in here. From the Philippines, then I went to Barcelona to the Textile Institute there because I knew I needed something more. I knew my technology wasn't right. The technology in the Philippines wasn't right either. Uh, so uh, we developed uh, the third and last uh, stage of this uh, project, which is really how in what I'm concentrated at the moment, a new product which is made with pineapple fibers. Now, these pineapple fibers are not the first fibers you saw. These pineapple fibers come from the fruit, the, the, the harvest. Once you harvest the, the pineapple, you have these leaves basically letting the rot, they rot around because nobody's doing anything with them. So it's actually zero cost, this raw material. Uh, but they have exactly what we need. Uh, they can be needle punch, they can be air laid, they can be put into a product that uh, it's the base for our leather alternative. Now, what we didn't know, I didn't know uh, when I started doing this, I only know about six months, is that the first stage of this, which we call now jungle to industry, this first stage of our product, it really has industrial usages, which is really very exciting. And it was through somebody in Ikea that we were trying to work how this leather alternative could go with them. And they said, but listen, Carmen, you've got something in here that it can really be used as a natural filler. And it was this person that said to us, why don't you start developing this to really build up the business into the next stage? And this is really how we're doing. Uh, we know now that this natural web has sound dust insulating ultraviolet protection properties and it can be used, of course, in the eco-building industry, in the furniture making as well, and in the car industry as well. Now, if you told me three, even three years ago, oh, you're going to develop something like that, I would say, oh gosh, that's not really designed. This is kind of very boring product. No, and now I know I can see what is behind it, where it's going and how it can help the people in the land. And it has become, to me, a very exciting product, of course. Um, from that, we're still moving on with our research and development, which is cradle to cradle, I must say, into the final product, which is the same, but adding polymers and adding natural resins. Everything has to be 100% natural. We come to this, which still needs about a year and a half, I think, of research to finish it. But uh, the results are quite important and they are quite positive on this. It can be used for furnishing, it can be used for the fashion accessories. So I'm waiting for my bags to be made into this and clothing and hopefully shoes as well. We have done quite a lot of color testing and, and uh, uh, testing on tensile strength, all these sort of things. And in the middle of this, I was working with these people in, in, the, in the university and they were saying, Carmen, you let us work and we do all the scientific work and you do the design work. And I thought, this isn't right. I mean, you know, we have to work together. It's got to be ethical, it has to be ecological, it has to be this. So I could see that it really wasn't working. And then I discovered really how it is to work with cradle to cradle, which is in a way the way this is going to go now. Uh, I think everybody knows about cradle to cradle, so I'm not going to... You don't know, Karul? Okay, I'll tell you. Cradle to cradle is a design principle based on the principle that waste equals food. So anything, if we take my project, okay, anything that is going to be wasted, which is zero, because everything is going back to the biological cycle, means to the earth. So that will feed nature again to become food again. So it's actually a closed circle. So for anybody that can read it, you can see that it is really that we have to take care of man and nature and we have to design any products in a way that they come or they end up in two different cycles. One is the biosphere cycle, which means that they end up in a natural environment, which is like my products will do. And the other one is the technical uh, technosphere, as they say, technical nutrients, which is the man-made technical environment, like all our computers, all most of the things we have around, and they have to be designed in a way that they have to be reused. And obviously, you have to design any product that is easily deassembled to go either into one or to the other. So where are we now with this project? 
we know we have unique products and they are definitely right for our times that the, our speakers are telling us. We have an abundance of natural fibers. Some of them are actually zero cost at the beginning, so we really have something there. We have research and development near completion and we have a team. Uh, we, I am going to go to Royal College in London and hopefully we are getting Michael Brangard, who is one of the people that started Cradle to Cradle, to be the assessor of this. So this is going to be uh, hopefully the first Cradle to Cradle product coming out of Royal College of London. So, uh, well, it's kind of exciting anyway. And we know that there is potential in industry and also we have brought these samples to different people like Camper, I don't know, Camper Shoes, uh, and they're really quite interested, but it isn't finished. So uh, this is not terribly important, but anyway, we need investment for the research and development. And I will tell you the last piece, which I think is the important. We really need a framework for action for the future of jungle to people that makes a profit from its environmental and social responsibilities. And this is really what it's all about. We're not thinking about making money from the product only, which it has to be, but the money making or the profit making comes from the environment. The minute we really look after the earth that is really profit we are looking after our planet basically doing that and the people working there by looking after them we are really profiting them and profiting us I mean this is absolutely crucial for the way we work and this is our mission statement which is, this project aims to meet the challenge of our times by developing a proposal in which commercial success is integrated with and promotes social and cultural development. This will come about by validating the potential of these Philippine indigenous fibers and their subsequent transformation into new materials and products suitable for contemporary applications in industry as well as in fashion and interiors. It will contribute towards the all-encompassing development of man, community and the earth. And I hope this is enough challenge for anybody. It's, it's quite a challenge for me. Thank you very much.